A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me, you cannot do anything. If you remain in me, my words remain in you. Ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In his farewell discourse, in his last will and testament, Jesus commands the disciples, remain in me as I remain in you. Live on in me as I live on in you. Jesus is expressing a communion, a personal communion, an inward communion, an enduring communion. You know, I believe every loving mother and the child of her womb richly reflect this extraordinary personal, inward, and enduring communion which Jesus is commanding his disciples to have in the gospel. Now, just stop and think for a moment. The first person you and I ever touched was the mother in whom we lived. And I, like you, am grateful for the life my mother fed me in our touching. But what's even more amazing to me is the fact that during those nine months in her womb, this time was the most natural foundation for a type of knowing that surpasses all other types of knowledge, a knowledge by being, a knowledge which comes through union, a knowledge through love. You see, the most perfect form of knowledge is not a mathematical equation or a foolproof argument or an accumulation of facts. Knowing is most perfect where the knower and what's known are fused into one because here is where knowledge becomes love. This is what Paul is speaking about when he writes in his letter to the Philippians. I consider everything that I have ever done as nothing in comparison to knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. In short, Paul is saying nothing, absolutely nothing compares to the experience of love that I have for Christ and that Christ has for me. And believe it or not, the first model of human knowing is to be found in the mother. The mother knows by being. She knows through loving. She knows this child in her womb and so much else by being one with the child in the most intimate union this world knows. The child in the mother and the mother in the child. At the same time, our earliest love story is strangely intermingled with the story or a story of severing, of gently pushing away a farewell, that final triumphant thrust that launched every one of us into the world with the severing of our umbilical cord. And this was only the beginning. It was a sign of a love bent on liberating, bent on gradually freeing you and I from the bondage of our mothers so that we could begin to live our own life and to be open to loving and sharing our life with others. I remember at the young age of 14 when I myself left home to begin my journey to the priesthood, I can so clearly remember only my mother's encouraging smile as I boarded the Greyhound bus in Baltimore. I was not allowed to see my mother's tears. 
Now, as strange as it seems, from that separation at 14 and my mother letting me go, my mother has lived on in me more richly than if she had held on to me and clutched me desperately. But because she turned my face towards others and ultimately toward God, I live on in her more fully than if she had fixed my gaze on her alone. Because such an intimate love is possible only if you're willing to let go. No doubt, Jesus himself experienced this intimate love with his own mother. For nine months, God's own son remained, lived on within the body of Mary. He took flesh of her flesh. He lived in her as truly as you and I lived inside our own mothers. He was fed by her blood and kept alive in her. Mary's life was Jesus' life. Without, without her, outside of her, Jesus would have died. He literally lived in and off her body, in and off her life. As St. Augustine pointed out centuries ago, simply conceiving Christ in her flesh would hardly have profited Mary. St. Augustine insists that Mary was more blessed because she believed in Christ even, because she even before she conceived Christ. Because Mary believed, not only did Christ live in her, she lived in him. Not only did she share her life with him, he shared his life with her, the life of the God-man, like another bloodstream. And as she grew in loving faith, she grew in life, in the life that is Christ. Now and forever, Mary lives in Christ as Christ lives in her. And Christ gave Mary to us to be our mother, our spiritual mother, whose love for us promises to help us to live on in her son's love. Her faith in God shows us how richly the love of Christ can live in us. It is our yes to God each day that opens us to a whole new way of life, a life of grace. Christ shares his life with all those who are linked to him. As long as we remain in him, through loving faith, he remains in us through faithful love. We live his life, we are Christ. And that relationship, that alters us radically, that transforms us. We indeed become a new creation, for God gives himself to us, is present to us in a new way, makes it possible for you and I to know and love him. And how important it is that we live in Christ and Christ live in us. Mary's life, more than anyone else, shows us that apart from Christ, we can do nothing. <laughs>